Hi, it's Tony Woodcock here. You're listening to the Green Jumper Pod with Marcus Alton. Coming up on the next Green Jumper, my guest is a former TV sports reporter who was kept on his toes by Cluffy for over 20 years. Cluffy was the master of mind games before Alex Ferguson or anybody. Mm. And he liked to keep you guessing. He was very good at it. And when you went to do an interview with him, you didn't know what mood he'd be in. He'd either be delighted to see you and welcome you straight in, or he'd keep you waiting for a long time. And sometimes that could be a very long time. You're waiting outside the office and then he'd eventually appear. And sometimes he'd uh, give you a very quick and succinct interview. And other times um, you could get away. He'd be telling you stories and it'd be just one, just listening to him tell stories was wondrous. So you never knew. So he kept you guessing. He was the master at it. Dennis Coath was a reporter and presenter at Central TV in the Midlands. In our chat for The Green Jumper, he shares his cluffy memories as he looks back at his career in journalism documented in a new book. In your book that uh, you've brought out, you give some tips for new reporters. Uh, and in, in an interview, you say, don't always stick to a rigid list of questions because your interview may go in an unexpected direction. I'm sure that must have happened with uh, Cluffy when you spoke to him. <laughs> when you interviewed Cluffy, you didn't have a plan. It was ridiculous because if you had a plan of questions, you'd be ripping them up. <laughs> I mean, sometimes you'd be talking to him and it would go on to politics. Yes. And we'd be talking about how, how we need more bobbies. One of his big things, we need more bobbies on the beat. Uh, he was a really old fashioned type of socialist and he believed in really looking after people, looking after the community and being a member of the community. And uh, he used to go on about that. But he just suddenly got off a tangent uh, talking about something. But he was so articulate about every subject. Uh, so that uh, you don't, didn't know which way the conversation was going to go. Dennis reveals what Brian told him about son Nigel as the young number nine was starting his career at Nottingham Forest. And he talks about why Cluffy had total admiration for goalkeeper Peter Shilton. Probably the one player Cluffy really left alone and was almost in awe of was Peter Shilton because he just uh, let Peter do his own thing because Peter knew what he was doing. He was the exemplary professional. He'd stay behind after training and uh, get kids to, you know, have shooting practice with. And uh, other players would be long <laughs> back in the changing rooms having a shower getting changed. And Peter would still be out there training. Yes. But he was uh, a one-off. Yes. And I think, um, as the story goes, uh, that, that's what led to Cluffy wearing the green sweater uh, in the end, because he saw Shilton wearing a green sweater with number one on the back yeah. and said, hey, I'm the number one round here, and started wearing the, <laughs> the green jumpers. So, uh, But that's uh, more admiration for Shilton, really, I think, that one. Cluffy used to say that Shilton was worth 10 or 15 points a season, Alone, and that was in the days when it was like two points for a win, um, which shows you, you know, how much he thought of him. Cluffy also couldn't believe that the England manager at the time, Ron Greenwood, couldn't decide between Shilton and Clements. No, I couldn't. I mean, Clements was a great goalkeeper, but Shilton was the best in the world. Yeah. So I found that absolutely extraordinary. They used to rotate the uh, pair of them. Now, when people talk about who was the greatest England footballer, it seems like goalkeepers don't count. But Peter Shilton got 125 caps. It should have been about 150. And the saves he made, I mean, that, that, that Forrest wouldn't have won the, the uh, European Cup twice without Peter Shilton. He was the best. Just take a look at the show notes for more details about Dennis's new book. In our conversation, there's also a tribute to the legendary commentator John Motson, who passed away at the age of 77 after an outstanding career behind the microphone. Uh, he had a presence and he had a method. And what you, you, everybody would learn from John Motson is that important word P, preparation, preparation. He was never caught out, was Motty, with uh, so he did so much research and he spent the night before a big game just swatting, swatting, swatting until he knew every fact and figure about the game yeah. and could just recall them. So uh, research, fantastic. And also it was very sad to hear about the death of... Uh, ITV's World of Sport host, Dickie Davis, oh, um, as I, well. Oh, 
Yeah. Yes, I was on some early World of Sports with Dickie Davis. Oh. And um, one thing I remember doing was um, they did wrestling at the time. And it was the final wrestling match for Mick McManus, the, the, oh. the wrestler. Yeah. And I was I did the live thing with Mick McManus into World of Sport and had to escort him into the ring and interview him afterwards. Uh, and that was with, with Dickie Davis. And I um, yeah, was, did a few pieces on World of Sport. And Dickie, he was just, a, as he appeared, real gentleman, Great pro, lovely man. You'll also hear Dennis's memories of being the MC at a gala fundraising dinner for the Clough statue in Nottingham in the presence of Brian's family. It was a, a, a lovely warm evening, the people who came along, Clough's family and uh, everybody there. And some of the great people like John Robertson was there and John McGovern, some of the great old stores. And uh, we had a wonderful evening. Yes. It was like a, it was a celebration uh, of the man, and luckily we made raised the funds for the uh, for the statue, which is a must uh, because there's two people you associate Nottingham yes. with: Robin Hood and Cluffy. One of Cluffy's sporting idols, Muhammad Ali, was also among Dennis's interviewees. It was a very poignant interview, and the warmth and the awe of the man came across. He was just a mate, just being in his presence. He's, he's the only first person, apart from Cluffy, I've ever felt in awe of. There's <laughs> two people in my life I've felt in awe of, Brian Clough, Muhammad Ali. And just being in Muhammad Ali's presence was just amazing. And he... he he didn't have a mark on his face. You couldn't believe this guy's been a top boxer. Not, not a mark on his face, um, but he was so witty still. And there were some kids came in and he played, he pretended to spar with them. And they were just thrilled to bits. And uh, it, uh, he had still had that twinkle in his eye and that, that wit. All that, plus his poignant last meeting with Cluffy, which left Dennis close to tears. It really is a special interview. I hope you can join me next time for more memories of the great man in the Green Jumper.